Great stuff. We're at the bottom of, about to, uh, I shouldn't say the word kick off. That's not the right thing to say. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Or maybe it is the right thing to say. Uh, where are they? Thank you. Uh, here we are, Duff. Volvo Ahmed Base, as we Thank press you. on. Try and finish as we can promptly tonight. Um, and we are where it says Rabbi Yossi Omer. One, two, three, four. Eight lines up, Rabiosi Omer. And Peter, you may want to put everybody on mute so there's no feedback coming through. People can come off mute if they want to. Yeah, I don't think Mike was talking to us. Uh, but anyway, right, let, let on we go. Rabiosi Omer, let's go back to Michelle. Are you well, Sam, before we start? Good, good to see you. Um, Right, on we go. Davob on the base, Rabbi Yossi Omer. Let's just remind ourselves in the Mishnah what that's all about. If you remember, Rabbi Yossi is of the opinion, and we mentioned this on passant a couple of weeks, uh, over a couple of weeks, that Rabbi Yossi is of the opinion that the witnesses themselves are the people that have to give the warning to the, the individuals concerned. Um, let's say, sadly, if it looks like it's a murder case, uh, they would have to be the ones um, who would give the warning, don't, as I say, don't pull the trigger. You do realise what that means. You do realise the consequences. Got to make sure they know exactly what the person's, you know, of sound mind, etc. Um, but it's the witnesses who have to give that warning. That is a view of Rabbi Yossi. Ein yehu edov masrimbo, the Mishnah said. Those are the, that is only the view of Rabiosi, by the way. Um, but we're going to follow that through on the Gemara here. Eight lines up, Rabiosi Omer. Omer le Rapopa la Abaya. Okay, Rapopa said to Abaya, Umi isle le Rabiosi hai spora. Are you telling me, um, in, in fact, he learns that, before we go any further, go back to the Mishnah, sorry, I should have said the next line as well, there's a pasuk which says, al pi shenei, al pi shenayim edim. You remember that pasuk we've asked uh, several times, al pi shenayim edim. It does say there, al pi shenayim edim. Um, where, by, with the mouth of the two witnesses, you don't need the word mouth, obviously by the witnesses, what are they doing? Al P aid it means they are the people that gave the warning. So it's, a, a, according to Rabbi Yossi, learn from this possible, which means it must happen. It must be that the witnesses give the warning to the individual before any, the, before the court case continues, and certainly before there's a uh, uh, any the onish are uh, applicable to to that individual so it says the Gemara omale rapopla by it that can't be true. Umi isle le rabiosi high spora. Does rabiosi really learn this idea and view from this Mishnah, making it compulsory that there is a warning from those witnesses before we can carry out? Um, as I say, the death penalties or, or unshin. But none, we've got a Mishnah. Another Mishnah elsewhere. This Mishnah actually comes up in Daf Tes on the base. So we'll have to wait a little bit for that. Uh, a little bit later on. And it says, Hasone Nerag, Mi Peneshehu Ke Muod, U Musra, which means someone who, and it's well known that this individual, um, A, really um, is a sone, with strong words, um, with B, uh, a sone means hates, literally, or the Gemara later on, don't, we'll, we'll go into what that means, sone, but it's the principle. The principle is there is an individual called a sone, he hates him, um, and I say we need to go into that on Daftes, but the principle is that he can be killed because he is considered moored, warned. And moored means a full mind and knows exactly what he's doing. 
Um, so we're talking here about the consequences. We have to say that, you know, pulling that trigger means he's, you're, you're going to kill the individual. If the person is a Sene, where he knows what he's doing. Yes, you might need the witnesses watching what takes place, but he, they don't need to warn him that you know what you're doing here. He knows full well what he's doing. And I'll say there's more about that to follow. But the principle is you can see from here the rabiosi is of the opinion there are categories of people who don't need a warning. Now, if he comes from the posse, he says, I'll pee, Shnai made him. Their mouth must give a warning, don't do this because you realize what you're doing. And if you pull the trigger, you'll kill him, etc. It seems like there are categories of people who do not need a warning. And therefore, it's very hard to say they're using, or according to Rabiosi, there's a posse who says there's got to be a warning. Not just there's got to be a warning, it's the witnesses must give that warning. Says the Gemara, it's true. Omale hahu, that Tana that we mention later on in Daf Tes, Omad Base, is not our Rabiosi. Now there's the famous Rabiosi, Rabiosi Ba Chalafto, and there's Rabiosi Ba Yehuda. Actually, um, in some gear, so it says Rabbi Yehuda ben Rabbi Yehuda. Uh, Rab, the Rabbi Yehuda is Rabbi Yehuda bar Eloi. Right? Rabbi Yehuda was one of the Talmidim of Rabbi Akiva. One of the main Talmidim of Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Yehuda. Another Talmid of his um, was Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda bar Eloi. If you just I would say a stam Mishnah with the name Rabbi Yehuda. When I say stam, it doesn't say what his father's name is. It's Rabbi Yehuda Bar Eloi. Okay, so two of the main Talmidim. One of them was Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda Bar Eloi. Another one was Rabbi Yosi. Now, when it says Rabbi Yosi, we're saying over there, Hahu is Rabbi Yosi Bar Yehuda. A generation down, he's the same generation as Rabbi Yudah HaNasi, but often argues with, in a, in a pleasant way, uh, argues with the generation above, uh, which would be Rabbi Yossi. So it's Rabbi Yossi versus Rabbi Yossi in some instances. The Rabbi Yossi without a father's name is Rabbi, Rabbi Yossi Bariloi. Sometimes mention Rabbi Yossi Bariloi, sometimes that father's name is missing. If we've got the other Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yossi ben Rabbi Yehuda, generation lower, and that's what we're saying here. In fact, our Gomorrah, our Mishnah is Rabbi Yossi. Um, and over there, we've got, that's Rabbi Yossi bar Chalafto. Yeah? Stam Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yossi bar Chalafto. with me? Uh, the Rabbi Yossi mentioned in Daftes, who says there are instances where you don't need Hasra, clearly does not say that this posseg is telling us it's a must. Hahu Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yudahi, Dasanya. We've got a Brisa mentioning his name. Um, Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yudah, Oimeh, Chove Ein Tzore Chesro. There are some instances where Chove means a, a, another, a, a synonym for a Talmud, Chochem, does not need a warning when it comes to explaining the Halacha. That's what it means. Let's say it was, we were talking here about Achil and Shabbos. Um, then you don't need to explain to a Talmud, Chochem, that this type of action that you're doing is against Shabbos. He knows that full well. He doesn't need such a warning. Um, so he is of the opinion that you don't need, there are other categories that don't need a warning. Because why is Hasra, why is, is it needed? To differentiate between whether something is um, done uh, accidentally or intentionally. Um, now, in the case 
what we're saying there, a chover doesn't need hasro, it doesn't need to be warned to explain whether this is an action which is forbidden or not. In other words, someone can always claim, oh, I didn't know you're not allowed to do this particular action. The chover, a Talmud Hocham, knows that. He may need a warning to say, don't pull that, you know, that, that gun's loaded. Yes, he may need that type of warning, but he doesn't need a warning about the action he's doing, whether it's forbidden or not. Um, so you can see warnings aren't necessarily uh, a must. And therefore, what we're saying is our Mishnah, which says there must be a warning, is Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yossi Bar Chalafto. The Gemara later on, and I say, keep saying that, uh, coming up in Daftes on the base, that Mishnah, Gemara, is talking about Rabbi Yossi Bar Rabbi Yehuda who says, yes, you don't always need a warning. A warning is there to differentiate uh, between accident. Uh, when I mean accident, I don't mean pulling triggers accidentally. An accident, whether I didn't know that this action is forbidden. Well, the there are occasions you don't need that, according to Rabbi Yossi um, by Yehuda. And also there can be occasions where you don't need a warning to find out whether the person knows what he's doing. The Sone, obviously it will be looked into very carefully by the Dayonim, but he doesn't actually need a warning. Um, if you can work that out for yourselves, and the, um, it will be up to the Dayonim to prove that. So, but that is the view of Rabbi Yossi in our Mishnah who says, You've got to give a warning, and the warning must come from the Adim themselves. The rest of the Mishnah gets go back to the Mishnah. There's a Dova Ache on that Posok. We learned, according to Rabbi Yossi, the word Alpi Shnai made him. The mouth, you don't obviously what the mouth. What do you mean the mouth? Obviously, witnesses, what are they doing? Um, so he comes to tell us it's their mouth where they were the people giving the warning, um, telling the individual, don't do this, to ensure that he knows what he's doing, knows that this act is forbidden. Um, the next view says, no, Dova Acher. Yes, you do need a warning to differentiate. But it's not a must. It's not in every case you need to give a warning. What's the word of P. Shnai Maidim telling us then? By the mouth? Have a look at the Mishnah, please. Dova Acher. Al P. Shnai Maidim. Shelo Tehe Sanhedrin Shomas Me Piham Haturgaman. What does that mean? What's a Turgaman? If you look at the Rashi on the Mishnah, then we'll come back to Gemara. Two lines down in the mission on the same page. Shalote Sanhedrin Shemas Edus Ho Edim. Now that's very important. They shouldn't hear the testimony, Mi Piha Turgaman, from the mouth of a translator. Look at the Rashi, please. Trichimadayonim Shiyu Makirin Beloshan Ho Edum. They need to be very familiar with the language of the witnesses. We're familiar with that word with the time of Yosef, um, who actually, of course, he did understand the brothers when they came down, but there was a Melitz, a translator. That's the word, Melitz. Um, so what we're saying here is that... The possum tells us, I'll pee Shnaim Edim. It's no good that there's a translator. The the Edim, the, not just the Edim, the Dayonim must understand what those Edim are saying. Okay? Um, we're not having a, a, an intermediary here it, try, translating exactly what they say. They have to understand. And that's, of course, one of the reasons why the Dayonim were familiar with so many languages. Um, and that's are you, are you reading Rashi? I can't follow you. Where are you reading Rashi? Did you say? I'm reading the Rashi in the Mishnah before we go to the Gemara. Oh, in the Mishnah. Sorry, I was looking down on the bottom of. Um... Yeah, no, no, you're quite right. We're, we're coming to that. But before we do, I want to stress that Rashi mentions 
it and and so you would expect from the possum the possum says Alpishnaim Aidin the witnesses it's their mouth the Dayonim have to hear directly from the mouth of the witnesses not via a translator they've got to be familiar with all those languages if not I'm afraid they are won't be able to act as a dine in that particular case um, but generally the Dayonim were familiar with all those languages for that reason now have a look at this Gemara, please. Four lines up. The Gemara picks up on this. Doba Acher. Another way of explaining the Posuk. And why you've got the word RP Shnaim. RP Shnei Edim Shalotei Sanhed Neshamas Mepiyamatogaman. Fine. All very good. There's a case study. Hanhu lo, loaze, from the word loaz, there were some, careful what you say here, foreigners, speaking a foreign language, de osu lekame de robo. They came in front of robo. Fair enough. Now, if they're loazi that are coming in front of robo, it sounds like we're talking about the two parties. Look at the Rashi just says Lo or Lo Oze Bale Loshon Acheres says Rashi. People speaking a different language. Shein Haydayoni Makirin Bo. Now these people that come in front. It looks like in the same Rabbein Hananel, those people who've got Rabbein Hananel on the side of the Gemara, I think you've got it there, right at the bottom. Rabbein Hananel uses the word Bedino. They've come in a court case in front of Robba and they were speaking a foreign language. Now, the people that normally come are not, we're not talking about the Edim. It doesn't sound like we're talking about the Edim here. That word, the words, Hani Loazi de Osula Kame de Rova, and look, continue on, Uke Look at the Gemara, Uke Rova Turgaman Beinayhu. He placed a translator between them, among them, and the Gemara is going to ask, but before we do ask this question, well, you can see the question, how could he do this? Okay, so how could he do this? That's going directly against our Mishnah. Okay, but before we go any further, who were coming to court? These people were coming to court. You don't talk about the, it's not the witnesses that bring the case. It's the two litigants. Is that the same as our Mishnah? Now, Mervyn's got his hand up, or the yellow hand. It's a certainly, certainly a small question, but by this son, it's a son hedge. Remember, the son hedge, and like Mordechai had to know 70 languages. That's it? right, yeah. But, but the Beth did, not an ordinary, but the Beth did, he was speaking about her. Um, not the sun head, we're speaking about the regular. Oh, good point. We are talking here so, about not, a, a, you know, a, a bezin of three people or, or slightly more. This is a Sanhedrin. Sanhedrin Katana, maybe. The a Sanhedrin Katana, that's the point, because if it's a capital offence, you need 23 people, and that's called a Sanhedrin Katana, a small Sanhedrin, not Sanhedrin Gadola. The, 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 in Sanhedrin, the Mishnah is at the beginning of Sanhedrin explain when you need different numbers. You for a normal normal a capital offence, you need twenty three, and that will be considered the Sanhedrin katana. Yeah. How many languages did they have? What was the, what was the? Um... Well, no, that they they must. That's normally what we're talking about. The Sanhedrin would have, and based on that. And then what the mission of using the word Sanhedrin clearly talking about, certainly if you if it's a capital offence, 
you've got to hear directly from the individuals. No, from, no, but would they have to, would they they have would to know then, 70 languages? That's what I'm saying. Would yeah, they have to know? Or, you, or you bring on someone who can speak that particular that language. language. Yeah. bring a die on. But yeah, or better still, you'd have, you know, part of his, uh, uh, it would be in his CV that he is familiar with 70 languages. Um, uh, yeah, so you're right, is Sanhedrin, if we're talking about a capital offence, you want a Sanhedrin. Otherwise, they've got to hear things directly. So um, what happened here? Why was Rava allowing this maturgaman when our Mishnah says you don't, uh, you, you can't do that? But let's first of all focus on the case, please, because our Mishnah was talking as Rush. That's why I looked at the Rashi. The Rashi was talking about witnesses. It was not talking about litigants. Is it the same? Have a look around the side of your Gemara. You've got the Hagos Habach, the Bais Chodosh, Rabbi Yerl Circus, Circus. Um, have a look at little letter Aleph. Have you got that little Aleph in my Gemara? It's on the left hand side, smaller print, I'm afraid. On this point, Hanhu Loze. Also, they came near a Be'enai, or could be Nechda Betzida, written around the side of his Gemara. Hanu Lo'ezei Eidim. Ah, he's pointing out that this is referring to witnesses, because our Mishnah was talking about witnesses. Okay? So although it says they came, they came, they came because they were called. Okay? The hubby, Mida Akshinon Lerova. I'm continuing on this Hakura Sabah because we are going to ask against Rova, Mima Sneesin from our Mishnah. And there's no question, the Posuk says, Alpi Shnaim Edim. So the Mishnah clearly is talking about the witnesses. So the the, I feel like the, the default position is, says the Bath, that our, our Gemara is, we're going to ask a question from the Mishnah, is presumably also talking about witnesses. Okay, let's continue. Avo, now, but what is interesting is the wording of the Rambam. And if I can call, please, on Peter for his skills, this time we're going to the Rambam. And we're going to Hilchus Sanhedrin, so let's have a look at Perik, it's Perik Chofalov Halocha Ches in Hilchus Sanhedrin. So, actually, bring up the Safaria first, because I'd like to first of all look at the Kesef Mishnah. Have a look at Wu. Yeah, let's go to search if, and just remind ourselves and put in Cairo, K-A, uh, R, oh, no, hold on, K-A-R, I think it might be dub, double R, you might need a double R, O, O, no, I'm not looking at Caroline Bing. Uh, no. Okay, maybe. Uh, oh, that's it. Got him. Yeah, go again. K-A-R-O. So, no, no. Right on top. Sorry. Go up to the search. K-A-R-O. K-A-R-O. Now, go down to Joseph Caro. Double click on Joseph Cairo. Let's just find out, uh, remind ourselves about him. Rabbi Yosef Cairo, expelled from Spain as a child because of, he was born uh, in 1488. Remember, for, um, they, I think they were expelled 1492, weren't they? The same date as Columbus. Uh, so 1492, so he was 1488. Uh, but look, at a, we can read a little bit about him. He was so therefore born in Spain. Talmud is mystic, preeminent, halachic, codifies, best known at the Shulchan Aruch. 
in his lifetime, and fully recognized thereafter as the finished statement. Of course, that is a Shulchan Aruch, amazing. He also wrote basic comment on the Rambam's Mishneh Torah. And Rabbi Yaakov ben, whoop, thank you, Yaakov ben Osher, Asher, he's got there, Abaturim, both of which were major sources for his own Shulchan Aruch. Amazing how he managed to write all that as a mystic, also the heavenly revelation. Some of these were set down in writing. Da, 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 da. He went off then to my went to Israel, and where he supported the effort of his teacher of Yaakov Beirav to revive traditional rabbinic. That's quite important. The Hebrew, the original smicha, and that's crucial um, if you wanted to be able to pasken lots of different, shy, you know, extending uh, the 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 power of the Sanhedrin, bring that back. But anyway, not going into that now, but I just wanted you to see what we're talking about, 14 AA, 1570. The interesting look at his uh, age, almost 90. I mean, in those days, that is very old. Uh, let's now go to the Rambam. So go back to texts. Now we know who we're talking about because I'm going to look at the Rabbi. Have a look at Halacha. Have a look at Mishnah Torah number one, first one on the list. Now let's scroll down till we get to Sanhedrin. So it's after Ahavo. Keep going. Zamanim, more than that. Nashim, Kedusha, Zeroim. A vote a bit more, Kobonus, Tara. Imagine writing all this. Amazing. Kenyan, a bit more Mishpot in that next one. There we are. Sanhedrin. Double click on some, the Sanhedrin, please. And we want chapter 21. And we want Halacha Ches. So scroll down, please. So it's Ches here. Chapter 21, Halacha Ches. Keep going. Not hey, ches, a bit more. Six, seven, we want eight. Ah, this is it. Lo yihye ha dayon shomeya. Mi pi ha tukman elu im ken ho yomakir l'shoin ba'alei dinim. That's the litigants, as he says here. V'shomeya Ta'a no sehem. He hears directly their arguments. Now that's interesting. That's the litigants. Our Mishnah was not talking about litigants. It was talking about the Aden. Double click, please. Go to commentary. And we're going to go to that, Rabbi Yosef Kare, in his Kesef Mishneh. Okay for Kesef Mishneh. Scroll the other way. Double click on Kesev Mishnah. Excellent. Lo yichya dayan shomea mi piha turguman. U Mishnah sof perek kama. So we know where we are. We are at the end of the first perek of Makas, the Vovom and Beis. Shalo tehe Sanhedrin shomaas mi piha turguman. For omrinon bigmora. The Gemara mentions our case study. Hanhu Oze, foreign speaking individuals, to Osula Kame, to Rava, Uki Rava Turgaman Beinayu. For Heichi Ovid, how could he do this? Heichi Ovid Hochi. Heichi, like those words, Heichi and Hochi. Of course, Hocha with an Aleph at the end means here. So they're very good for your uh, vocabulary. Heichi, how? Hochi, so. If we would have had a ho 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 with an aleph, it will be here. But heichi ovid hochi, how did he do so? Vahotanan shalote sanhedrin shown me in mipi haturgaman. Now, can you hold that? And we quickly look at the Gemara. We don't have to go back to faces for the minute. Please turn to the Gemara. And the answer the Gemara was, last line of the Gemara, Rava meida hava yoda, ma omri. He did understand what they were saying. Velo hava yoda, ba'ahadure 
who he couldn't reply but he understood what they were saying he couldn't in other words he wasn't fluent to be able to 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 say things to them but he was fluent enough he understood and that's where the rambam's getting his last part here now you can see the rest of this rambam Mohir from the word Maher quick, he's not fluent in the language. Could they lahoshib lohem? They are. He can't answer, but he does understand the language. He's not fluent in speaking to them. Could they lahoshib? Then you can have a maturgaman lahudia oisam to make known to them pesakdin or whatever questions he's got. Right. In other words, because he will understand what the maturgaman is saying. So that's okay. Now, before let's go back now to this Kesef Mishnah. So the Kesef Mishnah, uh, understanding Gemara, as we've just seen, Maida Havi Yoda, Maida Havi Omri, Ahadur. I'm going back to the Kesef Mishnah on the right. Delo uh, Havi Yoda. Are you with me? So the Gemara's question, according to the Rambam, is it's litigants, not like we saw in Nagor Sabach. But it's litigants. Now, continue the case of Mishnah. The Alpha B. Even though she yesh me she perish, there are those that explain shehan hu la oazoi. Those foreign speaking individuals were witnesses, and that was the Agor Sabach. And it sounds like that's shut in Rashi too, although Rashi doesn't mention that. Just says uh, you can't tell from Rashi. But Alpha Pishesh Mishe Pirish Shahanu Lo Oze Hoyu Aidim Daas Rabbeinu the view of the Rambam Le Farish Shahoyu Baale Dinim Kipshat Lishna Do Osu Le Kame de Robber. They came to Robber. The people who are coming are normally the litigants, the witnesses are called to uh, come in front of the Bezin. So, what, what's going on here? According to the Rambam, it's very clear. You can see from the Rambam, we are talking here about litigants, not the witnesses. So it's very interesting. Now, if we can go back to seeing each other. Thank you, Peter. Let's go back to that Bach. So again, Hanula Zidah Han Nirabeinai, Hanula Ozi third line, Aidim. Because we asked from the robber, we must listen. Other barambam. Now we can understand this rest of our Goa Sabach. Other barambam. The Perik Chof Aleph Mihilchas Sanhedrin. In brackets, kindly shown to us by Peter. Close brackets. Mashma. De la Ozi Bale Dinim Havu. They are the litigants. And that's the way you'd really explain the Gemara. But I am Bechoshen Mishpat Simon Yudzain, that's the Shulchan Aruch. Tzorech Loima Ah, this is the way he's answering. Da ein chiluk bein eidim labali dinim. It's true. The Mishnah and the Posuk is talking about witnesses. Once we've got a Posuk which tells us the witnesses, speak a language that the Dayonim understand, we are utilizing the same logic. We've, in other words, the point that the Torah is telling us is that the Dayonim must hear directly. We don't want somebody in between and intentionally or not made slightly with a nuance when he's, changed, when he's translating the word, it may mean something slightly different in a, in a foreign language. We can't have that for the witnesses, says the Shulchan Aruch. And you can see from this Gemara that, yes, it's talking about litigants. Don't worry that it's not the same as the Mishnah. The Mishnah is telling us about witnesses, but we are extending that principle to litigants as well. Back to the Bach. So in other words, the Rambam is learning that the Pshat in this case, it was litigants. I continue back to the Bach. 
exactly what the Kesev Mishnah said, that this, it, the Kesev Mishnah, what is called the Shulchanot, the same person, um, the case is litigants, the Osula Kame de Roba, the Mashma, the Bale Dinim Havu. Certainly the inference and the standard understanding we're talking about litigants, but what you can see from here is the the principle is learnt from witnesses, from the posuk apishnaye maidim, and like Rashi said in the Mishnah, we are talking there about witnesses. Once we've got that principle, that the Torah is very keen that the dayonim have to hear directly from those witnesses, because otherwise, I say even intentionally, they could there might be a a slight change through a translation. We are utilizing the same principle, and that appears in the Shulchan Aruch. It appears in the Rambam, that actually we are talking here about litigants as well. So that's very nice, uh, based I mean, on there'll that. Be no, Robin, Robert, no, there'd be no logical logic to differentiate between... Yeah, absolutely. Litigants, that's, that's absolutely. And so and you're, you're quite right. Yeah, you're quite um, right. Once once the Torah has told us that for Aidim, no, yeah. no logical reason why there should be a difference. And therefore, however, there, I say the Bach starts off saying that we, as we're asking a question from the Mishnah, it sounds like they're witnesses. But you don't have to learn like that. From Rashi, you can't tell on this case. All he says is, Ba'ale los nacheres. So you don't know who they are. Um, so, yeah, why shouldn't they be the litigants as well? And as I say, as my movie mentioned, yeah, there's no reason why it should be different once you've got this principle. OK, so and what was the answer? The answer was that, yeah, he did understand what they were saying, but he wasn't that fluent to be able to converse with them. So that he did via a translator. And of course, he will know what the translator is saying to the witnesses. He will listen to that and say, no, 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 you've translated it wrongly. That's There's a nuance on the way you've translated. That's not the point I was making. Um, so that's very good. And that's how the Rambam Paskins like this point at the bottom. So um, so that's good to know that Rava was fluent in these foreign languages. I don't know what language it was. Um, but he was fluent enough to understand, but not to speak. And that's very important. From there, we see that um, they must understand. So very, that works out very well with the witnesses. Um, so even if they are being quizzed by the Dayonim, there they can use a translator as long as the, the Dayan is familiar enough with that language, he will understand what's being said. Continues the Gemara as we move to the next onward, gentlemen. Or is it exciting? And this is the, the last omud of the Perek. Um, and as said by the Kesso Vishnu, we are obviously right towards the end, very much the end of the Perek. Now, another case study. We'll have a look at the Bach again here. Ilor the Tuvia, Kareve da Arva Hale. They were related to the orave. What's an orave? An orave is a guarantor. Yeah. So they were related to the guarantor on this loan. Have a look at Rashi. Ilova Tuvia. Ede Halvor. They were witnesses about the loan. Kurovim El Orave related to the guarantor. Now, what, what we'll see about that in a minute. Um, okay. Now, before we go any further, well, you, you, well da, 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 da. If we're talking about relation, people being related. Now, we do, we've got rules that we've learned in Daf Hay, actually, if you remember, about um, you cannot have someone related acting in a capacity as a, a witness if you're related to the litigants. That's out. You can't be related if it was we had before capital offences. You can't have um, whoever, the, the Nerag or the, the Horeg, uh, you, you can't have witnesses related to those individuals. If, uh, um, uh, and that we know uh, a Korov is, is forbidden. 
These were related to the orev, and you can see that's different, not directly the litigant. The question is, what is this case study doing here? Have a look, please, at the Hagor Sabach. Another very nice Hagor Sabach. Little Aleph again. Sova Rapopolameima. Nirabainai. Hach Uvda, this case. Have you got the Bach again? Yep. Kovor Tamudahoha. Why did the Gomorrah place it here rather than a Duff earlier? Mishun de Shaicha. Lamai the Tony Laeo. It's relevant to what we've learned before in Daf Hey Omad Sof Omad Base. Nimsa Echad Mehem Korav Apostle. If you remember that Mishnah, the long Mishnah there in Daf Hey Omad Base. If you find someone who is forbidden, um, actually banned from giving testimony, a crook, um, he, he cannot act as a, as a witness. Similarly, someone who's not a crook, but is related to one of the litigants, they also can't act as an... So that's where this case should have been. The Mishnah was talking about litigants or the, the individuals involved, but he wasn't talking about an orev. And now we have the, the case of an orev. Says the Bach, the tamer, amai lo kova le'eol. Why didn't the Gemara place it earlier? Oh, this continues on from the previous Gemara. There was the first case with, with Rava. What happened? Do you remember these people speaking of foreign languages? This Elor Batuvia is it happened at the same time, another story that happened, case. I'm going back to the Bach. Osi Namilikame in front of Robber Bahadi Hach together with that other case. Han Hulo is there, and that's why it's placed here. So it's very interesting. So you've got Rova, and they you'll see in a minute. Um Rova is as we seen before. Remember, he was, uh, he's actually more senior than these other two up on him. Um, but nevertheless, this, this is what happened. Have a look at the case. Soba Rav Popo Lamema. Rav Popo wanted to suggest. Gabi Lova or Malva Rachike Ninu. What you need is only that they should be distanced, Rochik, from the lawyer. We're talking it was a, a financial matter, a loan. You, they cannot be related to the Lova or the Malva, the debtor, creditor, lending the money. Omale Rav Huna Bereda Rav Yeshua. Rav Huna says, I disagree to, with you, Rav Papa. Why? The Orev, all the Orev is doing is acting as a guarantor. Says Rabbi, Rabbi Huna, What happens if the Lova does not have the required money to repay that loan? What will happen? Lav, Bosa, Arvo, Ozil, Malva. Won't the lender come to the Orev? To collect the money, in which case that orev is equivalent to a lover because he's got the responsibility of the lover and therefore he is the same in that way that you cannot be related to the lover or someone else who might have to pay the money. Um, and you can understand, obviously, you can't be related because there's always the, the suspicion hopefully not, that they're, you know, he's related and therefore, yeah, the loan actually wasn't quite that amount. The money was slightly less. Uh, so there's always that problem. And therefore, you don't want the Adim related to the, uh, the Orev either. We do Puskin like that. As you can see, the little Aleph next to the E. Lesle. So uh, the case study looks like it happened at a similar time, uh, although these are Talmudim of Rava. Otherwise, this Gemara really should have been mentioned earlier on. But no, so that's one thing, thing about this. Ah, I mean, it's just the notion of it. He starts off by saying, 
I have to often cover some of the learned here because it's relevant to what we learned above. And then he goes and asks a question. I mean, so he goes sort of, it's illogical for his state. No, no, no. What he's saying, it's it's here in these couple of duff. That's yeah. what he means. Koba Tamuda Hocha here in the first peric of Marcus, even the final part of Marcus, Mishum de Shaikalamaidatoniel, it's it's linked to that Mishnah Nimtech in Koran Posel. And then he said, but hold on a minute. I yeah, I can understand why what it's doing here in these last couple of Duff and why it should be right there in Duff Hay rather than here. Okay. I mean, yeah, sorry. Okay. Yeah? So yeah. yeah. No, a yeah, good point. I mean, yeah, it, what's it doing? We're, we're always trying to link up Gamaras, particularly it's all a pair, a way to remember the things. Yeah, okay, very good. So we're now on to the last Mishnah of the Perak. Mi Shenikma Dinai. The case was closed. Nigma finished. Um, yeah, there were the... Uh, whatever the court case had decided, well, you'll see in a minute what happened. Um, and Uvorach, and then the man ran off. So in other words, there was a conviction. And then the fa fella managed to escape as he was being taken from place to place. He, he managed to, to run off. But then Ubo Lifnei in his court, they bring him back. Don't know how much time elapsed, not much, perhaps, doesn't matter. Uh, and they bring him in front of this Bezdin. Do you have to start everything again? Is this now a new case? So the Mishnah says more on this. Um, says the Mishnah, Ain Soisrin S Dinai. Stira means to. Um, opposite to change to be to to yeah to, to tear up if you like have a look at Rashi he comes back to that very that's important he comes back to that same bezdin okay ain soisrim we don't disagree with break it actually means a steer is normally to break so yeah there's no break in that um Whatever, whatever the 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 verdict was, lachso velisso velitein. Lachso means to go back. Lisso velitein actually means it's give and take, which really means normally the a language, not just a, a, a financial arrangement. Uh, no save and no save. It also uh, the two sides they're going to be arguing about the case. We don't have to go through the whole thing again. I'm not Ula. sorry. No, I, I don't. I don't follow why this question is coming up at all. I mean, if we've been told at the outset that the decision has been taken at the time, yes. why yes. do we even need to discuss why why we should have to reopen the case? What there seems to be no grounds. Absolutely. To... Look at the last two words of Rashi. Ulai Yizke. Now we have mentioned this principle before. There's a wording which says "vehitzilu ho'edo." We try, and that you'll see there's more in this in this Mishnah. We try, if we can, to get this fellow off the hook. We don't, and we're talking about a capital offense. We don't want to carry out, if we can, if there's a way that perhaps, you know, okay, the fellow escaped, he's come back. <laughs> You're absolutely right, right, Sam. No reason why we should open this again. It was closed. It was decided. The verdict was given. But maybe it, it's true. It doesn't really deserve it. But we try as hard as we can to get someone off the hook. And that's what we're saying here. It's an opportunity maybe it's a new case it, yeah it's true they will be he's a lucky fellow that you know it's a couple of weeks have passed maybe fresh thoughts about this and we might find a way to uh, not have to carry out this punishment that's really what we're saying you're, but but you're effect, 100 right sam there's no reason I, I, I hear the rationale but in effect that's an encouragement to escape escape for a few weeks or however long and your case will be re-deliberated 
I mean, no, it's that's so uh, your ab. That that's why the Mishnah says Ain Soisrin Estino. You are quite right. That's why Ain Soisrin Estino. We don't. I might have thought that we try hard to try and to get someone off off the hook, but we don't go that far. Excuse me. Maybe exactly what you're saying, Sam. No reason to. Um, absolutely. It, yeah, it encourages people to to try and run off. Um, there's no you cannot aim so in this dinner that's what we're saying so you know as i say logically there shouldn't be a reason why you should i might have thought that maybe we you know we try as hard as we can to bend over backwards but not in this case so that's good now call mokoin sheyam du shanayim if two people come forward and say, Biyomri, me eaten on a beach pony, we give testimony about this individual. Shenigma dinoi bezim poloni. They give testimony. So now this chap did run off. Two up there is caught, different place. Two people come forward and say, We were there. And we saw, heard the verdict. And he was Chayev in that particular Bezdin. Uplonit, notice they say all the detail, obviously they're going to be checked through thoroughly, but in particular, they need to say Bezdin or Plony, who was the Rosh Bezdin? Who was Plony and Plony the Aedim? Yes, you heard that you were sitting in the court, but who were the Aedim? So, you know, obviously examples and further, uh, obviously they're going to be uh, tested uh, very carefully. That's what we're saying. Um, even if it's in a new court, but if you've got witnesses who say we were there, then there's, again, uh, as you said before, there's no reason why we really should go through everything again. There, there was a verdict given. These people are testifying that there was that verdict. So there we are. Continues the Mishnah. We'll finish with this. Sanhedrin no heges be'eretz be'oretz be'oretz be'oretz. Whoa. The Sanhedrin can, uh, and we'll see the Rambam perhaps next time, in Eretz Yisrael, this is capital offences, or in Chutz Eretz, you need a best in of 23 people, more, as I say, to follow, this is just an intro. Sanhedrin, this is the last part, we'll finish with this, Sanhedrin Hahureges Echod Bashavua, Nikres Chavlonis. Once in seven years, that's Shavua, doesn't mean once a week, once in seven years, uh, is considered quite a cruel Chavlonis uh, destroying, destructive, uh, you know, from Chabolo. Um, so that it's unlikely that that's going to happen. It's going to be quite a, uh, a, I wouldn't say cruel, but they're, they're causing a Chabolo. Rab Loza ben Azari says, Echol Shirim Shona, once in 70 years, there will be a cruel Bezdin. Rab Tal from Rabbi Kiva, Ilu Hoyim of the Sanhedrin, if we were there, Lo Nera God of Meolam, we would ask so many questions, we're bound to get him off the hook. The final comment, Rabbi Shimon Megemele says, sorry, Af, hey, Marbin, Shofchein, Domin, Israel. And if everybody knows you're always going to get the people off the hook, that is, as we say, increasing murder, possible murder, because they know there it's, now in other words, it's got to be on the statute books. It's, you can't say that you will always get them off the hook because uh, that's that's not what's wanted. But I say more about that, and we'll look at the rushes next time as we hit 11 o'clock. No doubt the whistle's going. Um, so um, those people who want to uh, do whatever they want, or do, I'm, I'm talking about a whistle for Duffy Yomi, probably, for those people, uh, the Duffy Yomi people, uh, or anything else. So with that, gentlemen, I wish you well. We will just say still time for one chapter of Tilim. So very quickly, Peter, uh, and we're okay for next week, all being well. Yeah. Right, if you've got to heal him, Sheila Marlis, well done. I saw a night Ah, you're the